Hi guys, how y'all doing? Killer Shrew fan here, and today we will be taking our look at the second new for 2019 Papo dinosaur that we just received recently. It is of course Buckshot the Pentaceratops. Now, as many of you may know, this was easily my most anticipated Papo model from the traditional lineup. It was the most bold and eye-catching model that they produced this year, and I was so excited to finally get it. So we are going to find out if my expectations were met right here and right now on Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. But I gotta say, this is just an awesome figure, just upon first impressions. Not even taking a closer look at it yet, it's just so incredibly eye-catching. It demands your attention when it is on display amongst your Papo dinosaurs. If we take a closer look at the head, uh, it's really beautiful. This head is gorgeous. There is one feature about it that I'm kind of at odds with, and that is, of course, the lower jaw here. It's just a little weird to me. It feels slack-jawed. It doesn't feel like it's opening correctly. It feels like it's just kind of lolling open like something broke this thing's jaw, which is weird because from the front, this thing looks great. It looks right from the front and the whole thing just looks incredible from the front. From the right profile, looks great, looks absolutely fine. It's just when I am looking at this thing in left profile that it just looks weird, like we just got this lolling mouth effect, which is bizarre. It looks like someone drew this Pentaceratops and didn't have the perspective quite figured out, which, like I said, it's weird because it works so well from every other angle except this one. That is the only complaint I have about the head of this model. Everything else is gorgeous. Look at all of those scales. Look at how they lay on different areas. Look at the different styles in this texture. It's just such gorgeous work from Papo. The musculature is all beautiful. The way the skin hangs and folds around the mouth is gorgeous. The horns, the ridges, the bumps around the frill, the all of that is just so well done. I love the texturing, the striations, the uh, way the paint gradiates from a darker color at the tips down into the lighter color towards the base. That's all gorgeous. The beak features lovely texturing and gradation as well. There's a little bit of gloss around the nostril to give this thing a sort of snotty look, which is a beautiful detail. The eye is so incredibly lifelike. This might be the most lifelike Papo eye that I have seen to date. It catches the light so incredibly well. And then just look at this thing from the front. Look how intimidating that thing is. Imagine having that boring down on you while you're standing in the field 65 million years ago. Just wow. Papo knocked this head out of the park. I love the different style of scales and how they all work together. And I love the paint on the head, how they've got that butterfly effect with a splash of color in the center of the frills. This head is just incredible. You have got kind of an unfortunate seam line under the uh, right cheek there, and I have got some flyaway moisture gloss kind of at random places. You can't really see it on camera. Well, you kind of can, kind of up under the, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know where to put that. <laughs> Between the two horns, you kind of see it catching the light there. I don't know why that's there, but, you know, that's a nitpick. That's just a paint blemish. Everything else, sculpturally speaking, color-wise, is amazing. I can't get over this frill. This frill is gorgeous. Look at that. That is beautiful. Beautiful sculpture. And even the back is lovingly addressed. Again, an unfortunate seam line, but then again, what model doesn't have seam lines? The paint scheme and the scale texturing save it. If we move down the length of the body here, I love the way that the skin is buckling and folding as the creature turns its head off to the left. An area of contention that I have heard is the sort of hump back there, and whereas I can't really say for sure if this thing had a hump back, I will say this, without it, I think this thing might have been a little too lean to carry that massive head. The hump, which could either be a fat storage thing or just a big ball of muscle, really makes me believe that this thing could lift its massive head off the ground. It really makes it look all the more powerful, like a bull or something. 
and as you can see you have got a row of spikes running down the length of the body all the way down to the tip of the stubby ceratopsian tail. Uh, the tail might be a little too stubby for my taste, but you know, again, mild nitpick. Everything else, just look at that. Look at how the skin folds and hangs down around the gut and bunches up underneath the elbow. Look at the scale textures, the bumps, the little minute details that are included in this thing. The veins, the pulling tendons in the neck, straining to hold the head up. The fold of skin peeling away from the body as the creature lifts its legs and braces back. It's gorgeous stuff. The legs on this thing, I'm a little at odds with. They're a bit too long and skinny for my taste. They don't feel like the sort of stout Ceratopsian legs. It kind of gives this thing a look like it's a guy in a suit because it's got the longer arms, I guess. I don't know. I can't. I can't put my finger on it. There's something about the length of the arms and the lack of stockiness therein that kind of bugs me. The toe claws have been lovingly addressed. They are not accurate, but they are done quite well as you can see and I love the way that the toes are splaying out as they take the weight of this creature. The musculature and in, in the biceps and triceps and the calves and thighs are also quite impressive. You've got lovely areas of wrinkles down around the ankle as the foot bends upwards and at the kneecap. That is also so incredibly gorgeous and if we were to uh, stand up our pentaceratops here as you can see the bottoms of the feet have also been lovingly addressed with wrinkles and soles and all that stuff. And then you've got powerful looking pectorals as well. As far as the pose on this thing goes, this was something that a lot of people were put off by. Me, I liked it. I liked the fact that this thing could stand in a rearing position, but it is the first model that comes to mind that is not one you can't that can be posed more than one way intentionally, and that's awesome to me. But I do like this rearing pose. I think it has a lot of power behind it. It really emphasizes the, oh, he does not like standing up on this review space. It emphasizes the power that this animal had and the sudden explosive ferocity that it could have been capable of. And I think that's really cool. Yes, it's extreme. Yes, it's unlikely, but Given everything else about this thing, I find it more than acceptable. And honestly, you could even like pose it leaning up against like a tree trunk to get some low hanging leaves or something. I think that would work too. I think it's great for dioramas or, you know, possibly rearing up as a uh, salt water, as a, as a lake dwelling creature were attacking it as it crossed a stream or something. I think this pose leaves a lot open to the imagination. But for those of you who are not like me and are really, really, really put off by this rearing pose, well, like I said, this is the first model that I know of that can be posed not one, but two natural ways without like it looking forced or awkward. Everything dinosaur was like, yeah, there's three ways. I'm like, nah, it's really only two. I tried it the third way, didn't look quite as good but like I said for those of, those of you who don't like the rearing pose you can do it another way and that is of course if we were to take our papo pentaceratops here and put him down on all three legs and then he would be lifting his uh, front left arm like you like so here the back toes are sculpted so that they will be flush with the surface in this particular pose. Um, I think it's great that Papo did this. It really shows that they're thinking out of the box, coming up with different ways to really push the limits of what you can do with a static model. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. Two extreme different poses in one model is awesome to see. I'm not a huge fan of this pose. Like I said, with the long arms and the short tail and everything, it really just looks like a human in a dinosaur suit. I mean, I think it works from some angles, like here, I like it here, but again, in straight profile, not a big fan of it. So if you're gonna display it like this, I recommend displaying it facing forward off the shelf rather than doing something in profile. But yes, just, ugh, this model is something else to me. It's like next level stuff in my humblest of opinions. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
As far as the paint scheme goes, that's another area that I am quite pleased with. You've got lovely gradation of color from a cream underbelly to a more tan flank and then a green lateral region with a dark green forest striping coming from the dorsal region with orange spots sprinkled throughout. It looks like a cuttlefish or a leopard frog or even with the lighter areas, it almost has like a bovine feel to it, which is absolutely awesome. And then the splash of color on this crest here, like I said, is just gorgeous stuff. I am such a fan of basically everything that Papo did with this model. It is so incredibly gorgeous and just a presence on your shelf. It's instantly a showstopper amongst their other models. Now, as far as the overall size of this model goes, we're gonna go ahead and bring in our trusty dusty tape measure and get an official measurement. So from tip of horn to tip of tail, you're looking at right around seven and a quarter inches long, which is about 18 and a half centimeters. And from the base all the way to the highest point in the quadrupedal position, you're looking at just under five and three quarters inches long, which is about 14 and a half centimeters. Sorry, we kind of lost it at the edge of frame there. If we were to put it in the rearing position, however, from the base all the way to the highest point, you get, oh, come on, Stan. You get just under seven inches off the ground, which is about 18 centimeters. So you're adding, oh my God, I'm so sorry. This is kind of an awkward measurement. You're adding about two inches to the height of this thing when you pose it in the rear rearing posture. For size comparison, we're going to go ahead and bring in the recently reviewed Papo Gorgosaurus, and this just kind of illustrates a sort of um, scenario that might have taken place that kind of justifies this pose. Perhaps the, the leader of the herd rearing up to frighten off a juvenile carnivorous creature that wandered too close. And I mean, if I was a carnivore and I approached this thing and it reared up like this, I would certainly think twice about attacking. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the size to expect of this Pentaceratops if you skipped that one and went straight for the Gorgosaurus this year. Next up for size comparison, we're going to bring in the whole Papoceratopsian family, starting off with the Triceratops. Now, the Papo Triceratops does still hold the crown for the largest Papoceratopsian um, in terms of the length. Obviously, the Pentaceratops comes up higher even in the quadrupedal position. Next up for size comparison, here is the Pachyrhinosaurus, absolutely dwarfed by the Pentaceratops, and then of course we're gonna go ahead and bring in the Papo Styracosaurus, another gorgeous Ceratopsian figure. Again, no match in size compared to this Pentaceratops. And we're gonna cap it off by bringing in the infant Triceratops, and again, much smaller than the Pentaceratops. Uh, and then I'm gonna put them all in a row here. There you can see the entire clan of Papoceratopsians from smallest to largest. And again, you can just see how much of a standout this Pentaceratops is amidst all the rest. And finally, for size comparisons, I'm going to do it. I basically have to. Here it is next to the Schleich Pentaceratops. The comparison to between these two is just going to be inevitable. It's like that meme. It's like, hey man, can I copy your homework? Uh, sure man, just uh, change it up a bit so they don't know. Gotcha man. And this is the result of that. Um, Really, though, I think these guys, if they were a little more stylistically closer to each other, more closer, yeah, uh, they would make for great sparring males. Uh, these two, the energy that they give off is very similar. They're too stylistically different to work together, I will say, but yeah, the energy is there basically because it's the same exact pose. You've got both lifting their left arm up craning their head, brandishing their horn slightly to the left with their tail held up for balance. And yeah, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I keep bumping my camera here. Um, yeah, I think they would make great sparring partners if they were a little more stylistically invol uh, involved. I, I mean, Papo clearly takes the cake in this case. I mean, Schleich did it first. Papo perfected it. Like, I'm sorry, the Papo Pentaceratops is so much better. But here you can kind of see what I was saying about how these two look great if they were like dueling with each other. Um, their horns lock up perfectly. And I, if I had the money, I would certainly order a second one of these Pentaceratops just to see like 
what it's like next to another one, what kind of posing options you can get with that one. And that one would, hey, look much more, <laughs> much more co display compatible. Well, everyone, there you have it. That is going to do it for our look at the Papo Pentaceratops. If I haven't said it enough, I absolutely love this figure. It is far and away my favorite of the two from Papo in the 2019 lineup. It's my favorite Papo Ceratopsian, and it just might be one of my favorite Papo models in general. This shows what this company can do, both sculpturally, paint-wise, and pose-wise. It just shows them thinking out of the box and doing something incredible with it. I'm going to give this model a 9 out of 10. 10 for my final review but as always i want to know what you guys think of this do you own it yet i strongly suggest you get it if you do not but do you are you planning to what's your favorite papo ceratops and leave all your thoughts down in the comments section below if you enjoyed our review today don't be afraid to let us know by hitting that like button and don't forget to subscribe on the way out as always we will see you in the next review Bye bye